what's going on? This is Coach Chris with the Strong by Design podcast show, sitting across from the Dan Long. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? Uh, yeah. Dan is uh, a good buddy of mine, and he's a, a weight loss expert, a muscle building expert, uh, suspension revolution, kill mode, Mr. Crazy, <laughs> Mr. Energy. But Dan is a real person, and Dan uh, has some really interesting uh, it's a it's a it's a different topic. I don't think this would be something someone would expect if they see your name that we're, that we're going to be covering this kind of information today. Right. Um, the, the question I'll ask right before I'll ask it first, and then Dan will just give us some backstory. But is your life so the listeners out there is your life a revolving door? Are you all in <laughs> every day? Yes. In your life, so that it's a big question. Right. Um, but Dan, I already said who you are, but what, like, so what are you doing right now? Like, what's if you described yourself in a few sentences, what would you say? Uh, well, I'm a father of three kids. I am married, been with my wife for 11 years, and we've been married eight. And we have three beautiful kids, two from my previous marriage and one from hers, um, 20, 14, and 12 years old. Two girls are the oldest and, and one boy is the youngest. And I would say that, you know, I just, I'm all about helping people in the world. I want to help more people, especially with my experiences. So what am I doing today? Mm -hmm. Things like this, what we're doing here with this podcast, I want to get out to the world that I'm human. And people look at me because I make good money. I have a nice house. I drive my dream car. They look at me like, it's not possible. It is completely possible. And they need to hear what... I've been through in my time to get to this point in my life. And those years, I want to dump into this today so people can realize there is hope. There is a way to find and be successful in not only a job, but also in a relationship. So these are the things I'm doing more of today. Besides my weight loss products and my exercise products, these are important for me because it's our purpose. So, Chris, that's I'm glad you asked that because that's exactly mm. what I want to do more of. Yeah. So thank you for having me here. <clears throat> of course, man. It's a pleasure to have you here, and hopefully we'll have you back too because there's a lot of different things that we can we can talk about to help people. Absolutely. Um, so g going back to – so obviously we're talking about – are, are you all in on you, the relationships that you have in your life? So not just your significant other, whether that's a, a spouse or a, a long-term boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever that is, but you like you, you know, parents, children, brothers and sisters, like family. coworkers, family. Yeah. Um, are you all in every day, or are you just functioning on autopilot? So I wanted you to back up a little bit. Because you were previously married, that you're twice. You're, 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 yeah, twice. Yeah, I'm not proud of that, but right. Yeah. You know. So, w w what were those years like? Where where were you coming from? Yeah. Emotionally, so, then. Emotionally, it was a roller coaster and some of the hardest things I've ever dealt with in my life. That would take a lot of people down, including a lot of friends of mine and family members that I've seen from the past. I come from a mom and dad that divorced when I was 12 years old. I had straight A's when that happened. Um, after that happened. My grades went to F's, and I remember ending up in a portable. And I remember a guidance counselor looking at me saying, why do you have F's when you just had A's on your last report card? And I remember crying and not being able to answer that question because I didn't know. So now you would think that someone can recoup from that very easily as being a kid, and yeah. obviously I did not. It was a very, very, very um, stressful thing for me. I wanted my mom and dad together. And, the, and I will tell everyone out there, the last thing I ever wanted to go through because of that and what I went through, that pain, being pulled one way with my mom, being pulled another way with my dad. And back then, you know, it was fighting for custody. It, was, it wasn't 50-50 shared parenting. And going through that stressful time, the one thing I made a pact with myself was the fact that I never wanted to be divorced. If I ever got married, yeah. I didn't want to ever have to go through that and or put kids through that. So... And what a what a, t a pinnacle point as a child. I mean, any any time I think it's tough, but that like twelve. Yes, I, I went through it at thirteen. We were like the same age. <laughs> you're in the middle of puberty. Yeah, I mean, you're you're just trying to find out who you are. Right. You have so many questions, and then all of a sudden, right, your and world devastation. Gets my yeah. dad moves out. My mom. So, with that being said, let's fast forward now. You know, and I, it took me some time, and I had a lot of anger. I think inside that I didn't even realize sure. because I didn't know how to handle it. Um, but let's fast forward. So then 
I end up meeting a girl and I end up getting married. All right. We were in, in a relationship for eight and a half years. Mm. Um, I loved this girl more than anything in the world at the time. And of course, you're young. You don't really know. Yeah. So with that being said, we were six years into a relationship. I waited for her to finish school. She was a little younger than me. I did everything that was not selfish. I wanted to make sure I took care of her. Anyways, we ended up getting married. We ended up getting a house together. I had a great job. Matter of fact, that job went on for 10 years. I actually, believe it or not, was a master at baking. Yeah, I, I, and I remember seeing some of the pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You. so yeah. everybody out there, so you know, just so because funny, I'm a fitness like, and exercise. <laughs> Dan with a freaking yeah. you know, yeah. chef hat on. So hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. yeah, no, and I had long hair back then, which I put up inside a ponytail. But yeah, yeah I did. I did. A, I run a uh, manufacturing plant for gourmet desserts for 10 years, so I'm yeah. a master at baking. Don't ask my wife now that because I don't <laughs> bake anymore. She's the cook. Oh, yeah. my gosh, she is. So... Anyways, back to that story, I, you know, it was a dramatic scenario because this girl, after eight and a half years of the person who I thought I was going to be with for the rest of my life, and again, made a pact that I'd never wanted to get divorced, yeah. she cheated on me with my best friend. And, I, you know, I'm, pe- I'm sure people out there can understand where I'm coming from. When yeah. you get cheated on, it's a horrible, horrible, like, feeling. It's it's like someone broke into your house and stole yeah. your most precious item. Yeah. Right? And meanwhile, it's my best friend. So, Gosh, that just adds, adds to it. <laughs> in my entire life, so everyone knows out there, I never knew what the word insane meant. Yeah. I literally went insane. I drove myself to the bakery. They locked me in a room because of the things I was saying. And they said, you can't go anywhere. They didn't let me go anywhere for four hours because I was literally not in a place that was a good place. So you can see what that did to me, right? Now you would think that most most likely I would probably never either remarry and or trust anyone ever again. I mean, look at my mom and dad, right? I went that. Then I go through this. Now at this time when this happens, I'm 28 years old. Mm. Now I had a decent paying job, you know. I had a home that she come she tried to take everything that I had previously. Granted we 50/50 it. I moved on, okay? I didn't move on emotionally no. for years. It took me years. So I played the field for two and a half years of my life, which I've only been single really two and a half years of my life. I dated around. Yeah, because you were with that girl from when you were a teenager. Absolutely. Into your 20s. Yes. Right? So Yeah. So, so it was a long time. You, and so you had this little small gap yes. of, of being single. Yep. <laughs> I know. You know. And then all of a sudden you find somebody else. And, and, and so everyone knows when I'm all in on something. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter if it's exercise, a party. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You you can bet Dan Long is going to throw a kill mode party. I mean, if it's whatever it is, it's going to be freaking Disney World. That's just the way it is, right? So two and a half years of my life, I was single. Holy cow, did I take it to the roof, right? And wore it out to the point where I'm like, all right, this is not what I wanted. I wanted to be with a woman that I could love, have a family, you know, be able to cherish my family, have a great job in the future, blah, blah, blah. Well, Two and a half years, a girl chased me for a while, and I wasn't ready. And finally, I, I gave into that, okay? The reason why I gave into this next relationship was because she had been involved in an accident where she was hit by a drunk driver. She had a scar from her belly button all the way to the back of her back that she had been cut open, nine broken ribs, a torn spleen, um, two collapsed lungs, she had a vena cable filter installed into her main artery because they had so many um, so many blood clots that were down inside her legs. They thought she was going to kill her. Mm-hmm. So anyways, she lived through all that. Yeah. And I thought, wow, you know what? Here's a girl that's got a lot of drive, want to live. She could be a great mother maybe to my kids someday, right? So got in a relationship. Six years into this relationship, right, we decided to have a baby. We have a baby. Now, well, I'm sorry, four years maybe. So then two years later, yeah, I have this at this point, I, st- I have my first kid. Yeah. And then I'm now 30 years old, almost 31, all right? Um, no, so it would have been a little bit earlier. So sorry, time-wise here. So with that being said, I ended up having my first kid, which was a, it was a miracle because she wasn't supposed to be able to have children because her whole entire pelvis was made right. out of metal. Oh, geez. All right, so... You can only imagine, one, take the risk of having a child with a, with a woman who says, okay, you can't have kids because you're never going to be able to bear that child for the amount of the term to make sure the kid's healthy. So 
we went against the odds. Yeah. You know, we did. We went against the odds. And Grant, I want everybody to know, at this time, sure, I believed in God. But I never leaned on God, and I never went to yeah. church. I, yeah. I mean, I did when I was a kid. All your all your strength was you were just drawing from right. yourself. Yeah, and, and somewhere just in space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> wherever you want to call yeah, that. you had nothing to lean on. Because I had nothing to lean on. I had no faith to lean on. I just, you know. What was, was your family life like? Like, your, you know, your relationship with your parents at this point? Your bro- I, Obviously, your brother, who I, who I know. So, yes. Yeah, what so, was it like, you know, with this crazy great question relationship great question i moved out when i was 18 years old right. on bad terms with my family yeah. i was I, my mom had originally custody of me and things went really bad and without going into detail with that i can tell you it got so bad that i'm the one that that forced the hand to get to my father then i went to my dad and my dad being a police officer it was very difficult on me because he never took the badge and put it away when he came home it was always yeah always that turned on and so with that being said, I end up leaving home on bad terms at 18 years old. And I really, honest to God, did not talk to my dad for 15 years. Wow. So you can only imagine being a son and feeling no connection with a father. And then having my mom, there was no doubt that I could lean on her, but not financially. I couldn't lean on her for a whole lot. And she was already a basket case because of all what she was going through mm-hmm. with her divorce. She didn't get over that. I still, I don't think she's over that today. Um, and she's single. So that's more or less kind of like what's in my mindset sure. as I'm going through this second deal now. Yeah. And here I am. And, and I want everybody to know, you know, I blame half of it on, even though these girls cheated on me, I blame half of it on myself. And I point the finger back at me because it's easy to go, that was the fault. No, it was half my my decision on where I'd chosen the red flags I see today, being 45 years old. Yeah. I get what I should have been paying attention to, and I didn't, I didn't do that. And that's why I'm doing this today. I want people to realize there are red flags that you have to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. That when something's not going, sure, it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. You don't just throw in the towel. But when you see certain things, there's no doubt it should be, I shouldn't choose that person, that man or woman. That Where are you at right now? Where's your surroundings? Where did you meet this person, right? And all of that in a nutshell with the second one, granted I have two beautiful kids from the second marriage yeah. um, and I would never trade it for the world. But you know, this woman I was with, we had two kids through all the trials and tribulations of a lot of work to have these kids because just again- Just from a physical perspective oh, yeah. on her end, it yeah. just didn't seem possible. She was bedridden. Yeah. Um, I worked three jobs. I literally was running restaurants at the time. I was out of the bakery finally, and I, I went into the restaurant industry, and mm-hmm. um, I was um, a sweat equity partner inside three different restaurants, so I'm running those. I fired my cleaning crew. I literally was paying myself through the P&L while I'm cleaning urinals of the same exact restaurant that I just GM. People thought I was crazy, and I started a pool business on the side to side hustle so I can make more money just to be able to pay the bills while she sat at home right, with two, trying to and with two young kids. Yeah, trying to well trying to bear yeah. be able to oh, have these oh, kids. Okay, right. And and then we did all through that. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, with that being said, I did what I had to do to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, after the second kid that I had, which my first one was Austin, my my youngest son. I'm sorry, first one was Summer. My oldest, my oldest daughter, and then um, that's now fourteen. Right. And then my son's twelve was second, and she talked me into that one. And I really wanted two kids, but man, it was so like risky. And you know, I didn't want her to die. Mm-hmm. I didn't want because these were all possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With an Aveeno cable filter sitting inside your artery, okay. And that's that, that's permanent. It is permanent. You cannot pull it back out. And at that time, it was in the that's testing in like, phase. That's like a fem- an ephemeral it looks artery? Like a, or? It looks like a spider web yeah. in the main artery, inside, right inside the um, oh, internal up here, organs. Up yes. in her, her chest yes. cavity. Yes. Wow. So if the, the doctor said, baby kicks yeah. wrong, yeah. mom and baby could bleed to death. So you go to bed every night yeah. thinking that, right? So, so you're, you're emotionally drained, obviously, at this point Oh, my in gosh. Your life. Working three jobs. I'm yeah. trying to get this. She's yeah. at home. Yeah. So I am... I am to the hilt. Yeah. I got not a lot more in the tank, yeah. okay? So anyways, we had these beautiful kids, thank God, because I love them more than anything in this world, and, and including my stepdaughter, Leah. And with that being said, you know, the hardest time of my life, and I find out that she's cheating on me with a man that's like 15 years older than her. 
using drugs after the pregnancy, thank God, but drugs that were heavy drugs. And I found all this out in my world. I'm like, I don't understand. Here I am giving 100% every day to my family, to my, my job, to the people around me. I'm doing everything I can for my kids. Mm -hmm. And then I find out that this is the second stake in my heart. So this was the hardest mountain I had ever climbed in my life. Yeah. Honest to God. It was the hardest mountain. Yeah. And with that, it started a long process. And it was two years and two months in court. And I want everyone to know out there, it was all about my kids. It was all about my kids. I did everything I had to do to make sure that I protected those kids. I did not want to take them from their mom. What I wanted was to make sure they were safe. And today, fast forward, I can tell you, it was the best thing I ever did and my kids thank me, right. okay? Um, you know, two years and two months in court, you can only imagine how much that cost, mm. right? I spent $40,000, she spent 80,000. So I literally had nothing to my name when the gavel came down the day in court. It was a woman judge. She was held to the fire to do the right thing for the kids. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about her. Yeah. And so I thank God every day for having the amazing attorney that I had and, and being able to show the real truth proof, you know. And so when that gavel came down, they said, Mr. Long, we award you primary care custody and Mrs. Long, you will pay him child support. Now, how many people do you know yeah. does that happen for? <laughs> I, can't, I right? don't know one. I don't but know. I want everybody to know, yeah. along the way, <clears throat> many people came into my path that were very respectful people that I trusted and told me to never even try to go down this road. Sorry, for my kid's sake, I was going to do everything in my power. Yeah. Just because, like you said, you, as a protector, you know, as mm -hmm. their father, you wanted only what was best for them and them to be in a safe environment and like you said it, you, your your ex-wife was using w whatever with whoever right and that's a scary situation for your children I exactly mean, yeah i would like to think that when everybody has kids they have them because they want them right you know not because it was just an accident and you're not going to do the best that you can for that kid or mm -hmm. the or kids yeah. So with me, it was, I wanted these kids really bad. And then look what I went through to get the kids. Yeah. And then now this is what you're doing, which tells me that now, obviously, you're putting yourself first, which is so wrong. It's not being all in for your family. You're being selfish. And I can't stand that. And that was one of the things that I had to fight for the kids. And, you know, praise God. This was the time in my life that I leaned on God the first time ever in my life. And you're at this age, how, what, I was 30, what? I was 30, almost yeah. two. Yeah. Okay. Th maybe 30, yeah, around 32. And so I grew up Methodist. Okay. We didn't, we went to church a couple times, but we didn't, we really didn't go to church a lot, but I, I knew I was something, you know what I mean? As a kid, I knew, okay, I'm Methodist, but here I am, I'm sitting here in this situation and I asked God for my kids. And I said, listen, I had, a, I had a talk alone. I said, God, I know you know my heart. And I know you know, and I'll get emotional. It's all right. Uh, I know you know my heart, and I know you know what I need to be able to give them what they need. I'm going to ask you to please give me my kids, and it will never be about me. So God delivered. Yeah. And so my life completely went in a direction where... I mean, I went from understanding that it was a God and I understood that I had faith, but man, to lean on God and to get mm -hmm. that one most important thing to me, which was my kids, to be safe and to, to have someone that cared about them, to fight for them, was the most important thing in my life. So when God delivered, it was a sign to me yeah. that I needed to be doing more of that. And so, you know... Now, my kids being where they're at, I mean, let's, well, let's actually, before I jump there, let's say, how did I get remarried again? Well, that's, that, that, that's where I'm, I'm thinking. So, so now you're a single dad with two small kids and you're still in restaurant work, right? Yes. And then, so what, what's, yeah, how do you transition from that to Nicole? Yes. So Nicole, everyone, is my, my current wife, which 
will be my only wife for the rest of my life because <laughs> yeah. she's absolutely amazing and I'm very and, blessed. And, and I know that to be true because I know her and she's not going to let, it, that's to right, let that's anything right. happen. That's yeah. right. So, you know, again, don't forget, I, I blame half this on me where I chose these girls that I ended up marrying, these women that were supposed to be women, but they were really girls. Um, you know, I, I went through a very trying time with that and I got custody, right? So it was very difficult for me because here I am thinking to myself as I'm gonna get custody of the kids, mm. which by the way, I know everyone knows that today it's 50-50 shared parenting. My case, they tried to put that on my case and I begged for the old law in Florida, that's the law. So they were they were able, we were able to get the, that implemented on my, on my scenario, which another blessing because I'm telling you they wanted to do 50 50 shared parenting and my kids would be miserable right now yeah because still to this day she's not where she should be and I hope she hears this because she needs to grow up but here's the nice story the amazing story is this here's the amazing story. and by the way that relationship the second one was six and a half years total all right now here I am I'm thinking transition when I'm going to get my kids here I am in a restaurant, and everyone knows being in a restaurant industry, you're working a lot of hours while I'm the GM of an Outback restaurant. Yeah. So at that time, an Outback chain restaurant, I, uh, I'm i working easy 60 hours, 65 hours, yeah. up, up to sometimes 80. You're like a, a GM, kind of almost like a proprietor at that point? I'm the or, next or? proprietor in yeah. line Okay. to get right in 2008 yeah. when the economy yeah is going to crap yeah okay and i'm in this position where everyone's going hold on to your job yeah. don't lose your job because right now it's going to be the worst roller coaster you've ever been through bull crap everybody i'm listening to you tell, trust me bull crap because i'm going to show you and i'm going to tell you exactly what happened which is another blessing so in 2008 i'm like what am i going to do as a career because when i get custody of these kids and i want everybody to know i knew in my heart i was going to get custody of these kids yeah and I knew it was the longest 1% chance, but I knew that I was gonna be the 1%. So, because I always did good. And I want everybody to know out there, when you're on a stand in front of a judge, everyone and their mother is gonna take that stand trying to come at you and try to paint a picture oh, yeah. that you are an evil Absolutely, individual. Yeah. And you know what's great is my ex had 11 witnesses and I had one witness over two full days of testimony. She had four doctors that took the stand, including family members to this day that thanked me, that were against me, okay, that were against me then in court, that thanked me today that I did what I did, even though they lied against me, okay? I did one thing that my father taught me. It was, you always do good, son. It will come back to you. It may take 10 years. Yeah. But if you do bad, it's gonna come back to you. And when it does, it's gonna be tenfold. And I can sure everybody out there can attest to that. When yeah. you get in trouble, it's tenfold. So I I they had nothing. They had nothing. And that's why a judge had to do the right thing. So that came from my father teaching me that. Okay. So here I am, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? I soul searched and I'm thinking to myself, I gotta get out of this business. And meanwhile, the economy's fallen through and the restaurant's taking a huge hit. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, and everybody's telling you, don't bail from your job. Well, yeah. I did the opposite. I did the absolute opposite. And so going into this next career, which was what I love to do today, why I'm sitting here right now on this podcast, which is so amazing to me, is people in the restaurant used to say to me, I had long sleeve shirt on, long pants, I had my keys on my hip, and people would say, Hey man, what do you do for exercise? You look great. I'm thinking, you can't even see me. I'm sitting up on all, all these clothes, right? And so people say, oh, what do you eat? Can you write me a plan out? You mind giving me what exercises you do? And I never, ever looked at it as a business. I looked at it as free content that I just would give people to help them. Right. Because I loved helping people, and I'm a people person. Love that, you know? And I've always ate well. That's a whole other story. But I did have a scare when I was 20, and it taught me a lot of lessons. And I learned a lot over the years, reading labels and paying attention to foods and blah, blah, blah. But... I said, it hit me. After six months, I said, that's it. I need to be in fitness and I need to be in nutrition. People are telling me, God's sending me messengers, telling me exactly what I should be doing and I'm not listening. So everyone out there, I want you to know, if you wonder what you would be really, really good at, mm -hmm. listen to the people around you. They'll tell you. Yeah. They're already telling you, yeah, you're yeah. probably not paying attention. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's important to remember that because I would never be where I'm at today, which this is fast forward nine years. I took a leap of faith 
And I went into the fitness and, and industry being a personal trainer. And I thought everybody could do what I was doing. And I just, I, all I did was find the best guy in Tampa. And I said, okay, that's my, that's my standard. I have to be like that or better. Otherwise I can't do this. And I can't, it's not in my vocabulary, as you know. Right. You know, it's not, I try, hope, all that. No, it's not happening. <laughs> like Yoda. There Ex- is, <laughs> there's do or not do. There is no try or whatever. Exactly. I, I didn't say it like Yoda. But yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So in this, I want everyone to know how I met my wife yeah. is absolutely insane. Okay. Because this, I got to show you how the devil tried to take this completely away from me. All right. This is amazing. So I had, it, we were six months into this divorce yeah and i'm living on my own with a buddy and his wife because i had nowhere to go and she's in my house got my car it was insane so i had i had to do this because even though i knew she was doing what she was legally i could not take the kids they would not allow me to do that so it was the hardest time again because i'm dealing with my kids living in that household with i won't go there but this guy she was dating was a very very bad individual um he was in my house matter of fact they they proved that he had two guns on him. But th- don't you have custody of the kids at this point or no? You're b- still battling. At, at, so I'm backing up a little bit? No, I did not have custody. So I want you to know how I met Nicole, uh, my current wife. Okay. So in this process, you know, I'm, I'm living with a friend of mine and his wife and so forth. And so I never took my vacations from my restaurant industry because I needed the money. This time I took a vacation because I wanted to spend time with my kids and I could legally get the kids on my vacation. So I did. Okay. So on the last day, I dropped them off and I called a buddy of mine. And I said, man, I said, listen, I really need to get out. I just want to go to the restaurant and just let's have a drink by the water and listen to some music. I just need to clear my mind. I'm going to work in the morning and, and, and I'm not in a good place right now. I said, I just have to drop my kids back off over there after vacation. He said, oh, he says, okay, I'll be right over there to pick so, you up. So you were still in a, in a, in a custody kind of battle yes. thing on the yes. side. Yes. But this is before, before you won. Yes. In, yeah. in, in, in a mindset yeah. that the last thing in a million years I yeah. want to do is meet another woman. Yeah. And right. go and fall in love or something. Right, no, right, right. uh-uh. <laughs> That's the last thing in my mind. Yeah. So he came, picked me up. We headed out. And we live by the water. Well, we don't. We're not by the water, but we can drive the water very easily. And there's a there's a restaurant called Bahama Breeze. Yeah, and it's on 60 over here in Clearwater. Yeah, 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 I right. Know it. So, you know, in the Jeep, tops down. I'm distraught. I'm not loving it. We get on Causeway. Mercedes pulls up next to us, convertible, two blondes, honking their horn and telling us to follow them to the beach club, which is right across the street. And I looked at my buddy and I said, no, don't follow them. All right. He looked at me and he goes, man, you're single now, dude. Are you sure? It's like, it's two hot girls in a car. They're in a convertible. They're asking us to go. I said, no. I said, stick to the plan. Hasn't been working out for me up to date, bro. (laughs) Right, right, (laughs) right. I said, so stick to the plan, man. Stick to the plan. Okay. He says, are you sure I'm going to ask you one last time? I said, yes. I said, stick to the plan. Let's go where we originally said. Right now, we got to the restaurant. Pull up. Go through the front door of this restaurant. If everybody ever seen this restaurant, it's Caribbean style. Very, yeah. very cool. Yeah. You know, very good food, <laughs> live music, blah, blah, blah. You're out by the water. It's really cool. So we're there, and I open the door, and lo and behold, this woman walks past me in this sundress. And I'm telling you, I was not looking for a woman. And I don't ask women out a lot because I, was, I wasn't single. I mean, I just – I was always in a relationship. You're right, right, right. So – I originally said, we're going to set out by the band and we're going to go out here and have a drink. And I go, let's go sit at the bar. So we sat at the bar and I could not stop looking at this woman. And what caught my eye was not only the beauty of this person, but she was in charge of a party, which I now know was a baby shower. And she was the leader. She was the one that was handling, unlike any of the girls I had ever dated. Okay. She's doing all these things that I'm just looking at and I'm going, wow. She takes charge. She's over there. She's Everybody's leaning on her to make sure this party's going on. She's a beautiful woman, blah, blah, blah. And then she gave me the hair flick. Oh, boy. Okay? So I'm like, and my buddy's like, she didn't do that to you. She did it to me. I go, oh, no. Uh-oh. I'm telling you right now. I said, and this is after about 30 minutes. I said, before she leaves, I'm going to ask her out. And I did. And it was a, an amazing moment because I thought it was just going to be easy. No. She grilled me. She says, how old are you? What do you do? Where do you live? 
And I know now why, because she was in a long-term, uh, not a long-term, a long-distance relationship with someone. Uh, and she had an ex, and I didn't know that. And her ex was in the restaurant industry, go figure. Oh I'm not batting a 1,000 at this point, right? So I tell her all the truth, and we went on a date next day, and here we are today, 11 years later. And so I want everyone to know that Mercedes, that black Mercedes with those blondes, that was the devil trying to sidetrack me. Do you see, I will get, you see these goosebumps? I will get goosebumps right now. <laughs> that is the devil yeah, yeah. trying to take away the greatness that God was trying to give me, which was my angel that I have today. Yeah. And that is the 100% truth. Everything I'm saying to you guys is real. It's 100% raw. It is exactly how this stuff went down. And so the devil tried to sidetrack. And if I would have went that way, I would never have what I have today. And I most right. likely wouldn't even be doing what I'm doing today as a profession. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So meanwhile, here I am, I, I meet this amazing woman. And literally when I got custody of my kids, I had no money. I moved in with her, with my kids. Five of us lived in a two bedroom town home. She has a, she has a daughter. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And so five of us lived in a two bedroom town home for four years when I took a leap of faith to go in the fitness in, industry. Yeah. And so you're, uh, you're just getting yourself going in yep. this brand new industry, finding your way, finding your path. And you're in this brand new relationship, and we got th and we got three kids right. in the mix. Too. Right, and you would think that would be it is a lot of work. Yeah. Okay, but it's only as hard as you make it, and you have to, and you have to lean on something. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a freaking rock that caught your eye in the river that you put in your pocket every single day, and you think that that gives you the power to be that badass individual that you need to be every day. Then you make that happen. But for me, it was leaning on my faith and leaning on the higher power of the Lord that gave me what I needed. And to have faith to this day, I want everyone to know, it didn't end when I asked for those kids. The blessings continued and continue to this day to be not even possible to be where I'm at today without God. It's just not possible. It's not possible. The, the, the blessings that would walk through the front of my gym and present themselves. It was my job to harness the blessing, okay? Mm -hmm. Because God sends messengers, and those messengers are very powerful if you use them. But you know, if they come to you and you don't use it, it's your fault, not anybody else's fault. It's not God's fault. It's a matter of you were given the exact need of what you needed to make the next step happen in your life. And so I went in the industry, man, and I tell you, the response was overwhelming. I went from zero clients to in one year and two months, I had 87 booked hours of personal training a week. And anyone who's in the industry understands to get to 40, it's very, very, it's very difficult. difficult okay. I, I, yeah. As you know, I know firsthand. 87. I remember doing 50 to 55 sessions a week and that was exhausting. Yeah. And, and this so is, I can't, I can't imagine. I mean, it's like 12 people a day. And, you know, seven days a week. Yeah, and you have to, and you have to, and you have to look, to walk the walk and look the look. Yeah. If you don't, I'm sorry, I couldn't respect you. I wouldn't hire you. So I have to train. I have to eat. Yeah. I got to drive. I got to make sure the kids are taken care of. I got to get them a daycare because I couldn't, I couldn't take care of them. I had to try to start a new business. And so with starting that business, I want everyone to know out there. By the way, my current wife, she, you know, no longer questions me, but you know. I know that every entrepreneur out there can understand that everything you do seems crazy to the normal individual. Yeah. And the corporate world is what I'm used to for so many years back then, but I've always hustled since I was a young kid. Mm -hmm. And I still side hustle, even though I do all what I do today, because um, I love it and it just makes me feel invigorating yeah. as, I, as I continue to do and that. And hustle, by the way, the context of the word hustle here is, is all good. Mm -hmm. Hustle means like you got extra pep in your step and, right. you, and you see things. Right. Uh, you look at things differently. Right. It's like you take, a, you take on a task and you just crush it. Right. And how can I, and how can I help someone get what they need mm -hmm. to make it a win-win scenario? But maybe there's a money exchange of something like, let's say recently I had, um, what was it? I did something for someone that was a good deed and they came back to me and said, hey, by the way, I want to let you know, for a finder's fee for that, I want to give you 10%. I was just trying to help people out. That's a side hustle. Mm -hmm. So just help people. Don't expect anything and just help people yeah. and watch what happens. So, yeah. 
you know, um, the most amazing thing ever, man, is getting into the industry, it blowing up. And I had asked my wife when I was, <laughs> she thought I was nuts. She's like, and my, just so everyone knows, my wife, when I met her, was 16 years straight out of college as a paralegal, all right? And that's all she's ever done. And she was family to this law firm she was at. And so she didn't know anything but corporate. Yeah. And so here I am taking a leap of faith to become an entrepreneur. I'm not working for nobody, by the way. I'm working for myself. Yeah. I'm marketing you're, you're myself. You're operating your business out of the the uh, the, the gym. powerhouse the gym. Powerhouse the gym powerhouse gym. Yep, yeah. in Tampa. And so those guys gave me an opportunity to build my own business in right. there. And so I, I took it and ran with it. And I asked them. I said, "How big can I make it?" They said, "Run." Go. I yeah. said, "Okay." Yeah. So with that being said, I you know I asked my wife. I said, "All right." And back then was my girlfriend. I said, "Do you have faith in me?" She said, "Of course I do." I said, okay, because I'm about to do the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. She goes, what? I'm leaving my $56,000 job, and I'm going for what I think I should be doing to create the freedom for our future and be able to help people around the world. And I said, I know this is what I need to do. I, she goes, well, where are you going? I said, I don't know, because I didn't have any prayer at the time. This is all God. God laid it out, all right? So I really, honest to God, just knew I have to do this. Just like I knew I needed to do it for my kids, I never questioned it. Now, don't get me wrong. The devil will try to creep in your head. But you got to stay true. you got to stay true to yourself. Keep the faith and understand, right? So I did that with leap, taking this leap of faith. And she, she's like, are you sure? I was like, yes. So God bless her. You know, She had a little money in the bank. She supported us for a very short amount of time while I hustled to get this, my job off Build the ground. Yeah. And, man, it happened fast. And you know, that history of that story is absolutely amazing because not only was I helping people and I was, you know, I operate, as you know, with a lot of energy. I don't drink coffee. don't need it. Um, <laughs> I'm 45. I want to act like I'm 21. Yeah. And I want to come off on people as motivating, good coaching, great coaching, um, help them in any way. I don't care if it's spiritual, physical, mental, right? Mental, yeah, yeah. you name it. I can help you because I've been through a lot in my time. That's why God did that. My purpose is to help more people and do more shows like this, to get people out there to understand you can prevail and you can't push through. And even if you have 50-50 shared parenting, that's okay. That's okay. You have something and you lean on what you do have, which is that 50% and you make that 50% a hundred. Yeah. And kick ass every day. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's what we're... Being all in. How, how all in are you every single day you wake up? So, because it's a choice. Now, let's talk about all in. Because here I am. I'm in this relationship. Yeah. I want everyone to know. I got in this relationship, and she had been married before. Yeah. Cheated on. He did drugs. She had custody of her kid, her daughter. Meanwhile, I went through. I did. Everybody right. just heard a story. Right. And now I'm in my situation. Well, guess what? You think that we would just mold together? Great. Right. No, nope, it no. didn't happen like that. We got together, and within two years, our relationship was in a very bad place. To a point where one day I call her on the phone and I said, I want you to pick a church, any church. Now, everybody out there, so you know, my wife is 100% Greek, so she's Orthodox Christian. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. She's a Christian. Meth, you know, being Methodist is Christian. So, but I wasn't practicing it. But you heard my story of what I started to do sure. on God. So. Sure. I said, our relationship's not in a great place. We need we need more than what we, we're doing right now. We need to lean on somebody else. This is not going to work. Yeah. And it was all of our past haunting us in our future, mm. which was trust, which was thinking that, you know, our exes are us. It's not that way. And so I remember saying to myself, well, I can't let her have my banking account. She's going to try to steal my money. I used to think all these things because of my past. Yeah. And so being all in, you, and this is my priest that I'm telling you, he's the one that taught me this, all right? You cannot go into anything. I don't care. If you want to be successful at anything, you cannot go into it being half in, a quarter in. It has to be all in. If you're not all in, then you're not being true to yourself. You're not being true to whoever you're trying to give, whatever it is you're trying to give to. And here you're going to, you're going to fail. You're going to fail, okay? And this relationship would have failed if I wouldn't have done that. If she wouldn't have picked the church, which was St. John's Church, um, Greek Orthodox, Orthodox Church in South Tampa, we drove there. And I remember walking in that church, and I said, maybe they'll open it for us. It wasn't open. We went into the, the priest's office. And that is another podcast that I want everyone to hear because it's a, it's a long one. And I want everybody to hear how powerful that day was for me yeah. because, man— 
holy cow, did that guy change my life. And you know, I'm not the easiest person to persuade. I'm not just going to believe in you and or believe in what you say unless I can respect and or trust what you're saying because I've been through a lot in my time. So I got to take my guard down, right? So here I am. That man changed Nicole's life, changed my life. I met with him six times, which I'll tell more of. Privately. Privately, I'll tell more of in the future. I want everybody to hear that story. Mm -hmm. And to this day, that's what we lean on. And that's what we have. We have faith. We have faith in God. We have faith in our priest. And if there's ever a problem or there's something that we need, I have Christian brothers that all believe in what I believe in. And we just happen to be in the same industry, which is amazing because God paid that way for me to have. We have something amazing, Chris. You know that. What we have in our brotherhood. Very fortunate. And so, and we all have great wives and we have someone else we lean on. So I want everyone to know that believe in you. Give everything you got. Be all in. You have to be in all in on your relationship, okay? You got to be all in on your job. You got to be all in on exercise. You got to be all in on weight loss if it's that's what you're trying to accomplish, okay? If, you, if you're going to eat, you got to eat. You got to be all in. You got to be all in in life, period. You want to crush it, you got to be all in. I was all in for every single one of these scenarios. And to this day, you would think I would be a messed up individual, and I'm not. I'm actually stronger, I'm more successful than I've ever been in my life. And in a matter of fact, like I said in the beginning, I drive my dream truck as I had as a kid, right? Because mm-hmm. life's not all about money. It's a matter of having and setting a goal and then crushing that goal and then on to the next. I've helped many children that have cancer, tens of thousands of dollars. My wife and I have done charity events where we've taken children to Disney's Christmas, all paid for that are suffering from cancer and a parent. Um, we've taken hundreds of children to do that. Yeah. Um, this is stuff that Make a Wish does, right? We we do the same exact thing, and mm-hmm. and and you know, and we live in an amazing house. We live in you know in, in an opportunity with with great kids around our neighborhood. I mean, there's all these things that I had a dream for my kids and or our our life, and it's been provided, okay, by hard work mm-hmm. and being all in. Yeah. And staying true to me and staying true to my wife and my kids and realizing if you do things, because we all do, all right, you do things selfish at times, you got to back up and you got to say to yourself, all right, what I just did wasn't right. And you got to put your pride aside and say, and be willing to be called out and hang around people that will do that. Hang around people that will look at you and say, that wasn't right, that you respect and they can look at you and make you feel uncomfortable to the point that you change that. All right. That's where my ex doesn't, doesn't, she doesn't do that. And my kids know it today. And so they're very thankful. They're very proud. I'm very proud. I'm very excited because I want people to realize out there, there is, there is a positive world. Okay. You can separate yourself from that negative and you can completely crush it by being all in on every single thing that you do. Yeah. And it's work every day. It is. It's never going to be less. But it's not. You can't function on autopilot. No. Not if you want great things for yourself. You have to right. see what you want and and take initiative every day and just be an action taker and not be and not just sit there and react to things. And visualize. Yeah. Visualize what you want. Yeah. And then yeah. make a plan. It's, it's as simple as that. It it's is. like the old football coach talking to you when you were a kid yeah. and he would say, See yourself make the play. Yes. See yourself, like close your eyes, see the play happen, and then get into the position to make to, to you know make the tackle or whatever it is. And that's what life is. Right. See yourself accomplishing these things. I saw myself yeah. with a woman for the rest of my life. Yeah. I have it now. Yeah, right. All right. This is the longest relationship I've ever had, and it's stronger now than it was on year one. Yeah. You know, I saw myself having kids and the vision of what I have today. Mm-hmm. It's better than what I had. Vision. Right, right, right. Okay? right. And I mean, and I saw myself driving that truck that I have. I saw myself because I saw it on Back to the Future way when I was a young kid. <laughs> all right, at Toyota. 1985. Yeah, remember that? Okay, and I saw that and I said, all right, someday. And granted, there's been yeah. so many sacrifices for everyone else before yeah. I ever got that truck. That's and I'm right. fine with that. Yeah. I'm completely fine with that. And so be all in. Make the sacrifices. Believe in yourself. Do not allow the devil to step in. When you get tested, it's your choice. Yeah. Remember that. Those blondes and that Mercedes was my choice. 
If I would have went that way, I would not have what I have today. I yeah. can guarantee you that. Yeah, I believe it. You know, and what do I have today? As soon as I got out of the car and walked in that restaurant, the Boom. Lord put that woman in yeah. front of me. Yeah. How amazing is freaking that? That is like <laughs> telling you, man. And my kids, it's cool. it was just it was just um, her birthday. And to read that card that they wrote and call her mom, yeah, it's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. You know? Pretty great. Yeah, man. So be all in, everybody. Be all in. Love it. Push hard. And, and, you know, love to hear some stories, love to hear some comments, love to hear, yeah. you know, what people have been through and how maybe this podcast helped you, you know, get through that next step of whatever, tr- you know, tr- trial and tribulation you're going through right now, because life is difficult, I know. But hang around great people. Mm-hmm. For me, you know, it's not the rock in my pocket. It's the Lord. And I, I lean on God and I lean on my priest and, and my wife and I lean on each other. And, and I lean on my Christian brothers, which is an amazing thing. And I'm blessed to have people like you, Chris, in my life. I'm blessed to have all the other guys that are in our group, which yeah. is not very large, but you know, there is it's growing, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so be all in and, and uh, please take my story to heart and realize that you can come back from a from a horrible scenario that you believe could crush you for the rest of your life and go into a negative realm because yeah. it can take you out if you allow it. Absolutely. Don't let the devil win. Yeah. No, it's a great message. I, I really appreciate that. And uh Letting, letting your guard down and getting personal and uh, sharing all that uh, life experience because I know that will benefit someone listening. Only way to be. Without a doubt, yeah. All right, my brother. All right, man. Love you, man. Love you, brother. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Good. All right. Strong by Design podcast with the man, Dan Long. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. See ya.